Hi everyone, my name is Daniel Field and I'm a lecturer in vertebrate paleontology here in the Department of Earth Sciences at Cambridge. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about studying at the interface of biology and earth sciences in our department. So first of all, what is paleontology? Well, very simply, paleontology is the study of past life on our planet. And some paleontologists study the fossil record of invertebrate animals, like those trilobites on the upper left. I'm a vertebrate paleontologist, which means that I study the fossil record of animals with backbones like dinosaurs and birds. Other paleontologists are paleoanthropologists who study the fossil record of humans and their relatives. Paleobotanists study the fossil record of plants at a macro and a micro scale. So you can study the fossil record of any group of organisms as a paleontologist, but the one thing that unites all of us together is an interest in studying how life on this planet has changed through time and an interest in using the fossil record to study the evolutionary history of our groups of interest. So the group that I spend most of my time studying happens to be birds. So I'm interested in their early evolutionary history and how they uh, evolved into all of the interesting forms that they exhibit today. And most of the data that I tend to work with looks something like this. The birds don't have feathers on them anymore. Typically, I'm just looking at their fossilized bony remains. And this is the skull of a new fossil bird that we've been studying that we're very excited about. We call it the wonder chicken. And it happens to be the oldest modern bird fossil found so far. And its skull is so well preserved that it's allowed us to infer um, with some degree of accuracy what this bird probably would have looked like when it was alive 66 million years ago. So one thing I'm very interested in doing in paleontology is using the fossil record of birds and their dinosaurian relatives to study the evolution of key avian features. And one of the features of birds that we're interested in studying is the origin of their characteristic toothless beak. And so to do that, we start with a family tree of birds and their dinosaurian relatives. So if we take a look at the family tree over on the left, right at the top we have scary carnivorous theropod dinosaurs like Velociraptor. Right below that, we've got Archaeopteryx, one of the earliest feathered flying dinosaurs that we know of. And then if we skip down to the bottom of our family tree, right down at the bottom we have modern birds themselves. So obviously between Archaeopteryx, which lived 150 million years ago, and modern birds, we have a lot of evolutionary time. And fortunately, that intervening portion of the family tree is represented by lots of really cool fossils of early bird-like forms. But there's a bit of an issue with that portion of the family tree, and that is the fact that most of those fossils have fairly poorly preserved skulls. And it's very difficult to extract much information about the evolution of the modern toothless bird beak from these fragmentary and broken skulls. So fortunately, as a paleontologist, we have a really fun way of filling these gaps in our knowledge. And that is doing field work and trying to find new fossils that answer the evolutionary questions that we're interested in. So a few years ago, we set off to find a really beautifully preserved bird skull out in the Jurassic of Colorado. And unfortunately, we failed. We didn't find anything. But as luck would have it, our colleagues working one state to the east in Kansas in the USA discovered this skeleton of an animal called Ichthyornis, which is about 86 million years old. And we were really excited about this because, as you can see on the family tree, Ichthyornis is right down there at the bottom. It's one of the closest relatives that we know of from the age of dinosaurs of modern birds. And so we were really hoping that there would be a nice skull associated with this specimen. So we took that precious fossil and brought it to a CT scanning facility in order to x-ray that fossil specimen uh, with very high energy x-rays to peer inside the rock and see what was there. And when we did that, we were amazed to find that inside that block, we had an extremely well-preserved skull of this early fossil bird-like animal. And as you can tell very simply, that skull is much better preserved than most of those other close relatives of modern birds from the age of dinosaurs. So the skull can actually tell us a lot about the origin of the modern bird skull and its toothless beak. In fact, if you sort of zoom in at the tip of the upper jaw, you'll see something very interesting, which is a little bit of a toothless portion of the upper jaw. And that happens to be the earliest manifestation of a toothless beak, homologous with that of modern birds, that we know of in the fossil record so far. 
We can take our CT scans and turn them upside down to see the underside, and indeed that portion of the beak is toothless. And what's remarkable is that this toothless portion of the beak sits right at the very end of long jaws full of sharp, pointy dinosaur teeth. So this tells us that the origin of the characteristic modern bird beak evolved while birds still had sharp, pointy dinosaur teeth which teaches us something we really didn't know much about before in terms of how and when the modern bird beak evolved. So a lot of the work that we do involves this kind of detective work. We'll start with dinosaurs, things that, that are much more distantly related to modern birds. We'll try to figure out what kind of questions we want to ask based on modern bird biology and anatomy. And we'll try to fill in those gaps uh, in our knowledge with new discoveries of bird-like animals that can tell us how and when and why modern birds in their characteristic forms that we see them today came to be. So I hope you found that interesting. You can find out more about our research group uh, at that website uh, shown there. And I really hope to see all of you uh, in the Department of Earth Sciences come Michaelmas term to uh, learn more about uh, the subject of earth sciences as part of the natural sciences tripos.